If you're unhappy with the performance of your pre-built PC or just a low-end gaming PC, you could be just a quick download away from getting way higher FPS. Now, no, I am not talking about just downloading more RAM, although I will admit what we're talking about in today's video is arguably as close to that meme becoming a reality as possible. We're talking about lossless scaling, and even though you might have already seen a couple videos about this, today's video is talking about it with the perspective of a budget PC gamer or one that just has a 30 50. Let's not dwell on why you may have a 3050, that's in the past. Maybe the solution is just to download a $7 piece of software, or maybe it's to buy a secondary GPU for less than 100 bucks, or maybe your solution is to just buy another 3050. That's exactly what all we're gonna be testing today. And honestly, I'm super excited to do something other than our normal build guy videos. Not everyone can just copy even the cheaper four or $500 builds. You have to make do with what you got. Now is a perfect time to test this out too before the holiday season, because you might not need a beefy and expensive GPU upgrade like you thought you did. And real quickly, if you're new around here, my name is Zach and I built my business in a pretty cool way to help you on your PC gaming journey, no matter which route you take. I make build guide videos that are easy to copy. I have a ton of totally free PC building resources on my website, and I even sell pre-built over there if that's your jam. I'm not trying to lean you one way or another, I just wanna show you all of the options, such as lossless scaling. Here's a quick example. With our RTX 3050 by itself, here's Marvel Rivals getting just a touch above 60 FPS, which isn't terrible, but obviously we like it a bit higher for a competitive shooter. With a quick flip of a button, that's now boosted up to 90 FPS without any additional hardware. All right, so real quickly for the people that haven't heard of this yet, lossless scaling is a $7 app over on Steam that people are raving about, and that's because it brings frame scaling and frame generation to pretty much all hardware in almost every game. What it also brings, or essentially brings back, are two GPU setups, and people my age have been waiting for this a long time. Lossless scaling allows you to leverage a second GPU in your system for that frame generation and scaling. That way your primary GPU can focus on as much native horsepower and FPS as possible, while the second GPU just handles the scaling and or frame generation. You can do all of this with just one GPU as well. Now that you know what it is, let's quickly take a break for the sponsor of today's video. Okinos, and specifically the exact case that I use for today's video, the brand new Aircross. Okinos makes some fantastic affordable cases, but here they're stepping it up a little bit, and honestly, the quality still surpasses the lower price. Not only are you getting a genuine walnut wood front grain with this little sample piece to prove it, but more importantly, this is an airflow optimized layout for solid performance. It comes with three beefy 140 mil fans that you can use up at the front and back, but also two more reverse bladed 120s at the bottom for extra GPU cooling. With this setup, we're getting a ton of intake from the front and bottom, and that's actually amazing for today's build with two GPUs fighting each other for air. Aside from the airflow, this is an ATX sized, very clean all black unit, and personally, I'm a fan of that big power button up front. There's also plenty of room for cable management and some nice Velcro straps to make that easier. And I'll be honest, my team at ZTT Builds is already asking me when we'll start selling a build with this case. It's currently at $79.99, but that will jump up to $89.99 after a promotional period. If you want to check it out for yourself, that link is down in the description. So what's also incredibly cool about lossless scaling is that it was made by one developer. Insane. There is a ton of technology that's packed into this lightweight and simple UI, and here's a quick rundown of what we're working with. On the left-hand side, we have the frame generation settings, and I think for most people, you can just leave this at whatever the newest option is, right now being LSFG 3.1. Here you can choose what level of multiplier you want, 2x, 3x, etc. And that's basically what it does because here in Cyberpunk, our native FPS with a 3050 was 73, but when using 2x frame gen, we're now up to 120. That's not a direct double up with the 2x setting because the native horsepower drops down a bit to handle the frame gen, but still pretty cool. Underneath here, you'll see flow scale, which I recommend playing around with, even though I don't have a firm grasp on this just yet. What's really cool is that when you hover over the button or honestly anything on this software, it'll show you an in-depth explanation of whatever setting it is, and it'll really help you get up to speed. Now, over on the right side, this is where the scaling is. Technology like FSR can be activated here, but there's a bunch of different versions, which I didn't really mess with. You'll hear me say this a lot today, but I recommend you try this setting out for yourself and playing and tinkering with it. I didn't cover absolutely everything. I don't think many people, myself definitely included, are really experts in lossless scaling just yet. What I am covering in this video is just what we tested over the last few days, and you may find even better results than I did. I'm not saying what we did is the absolute 
absolute most optimized way, it's honestly probably not. Feel free to drop your suggestions and results that you got down in the comment section so we can all learn this together. Now, what we are covering are the very basics of lossless scaling. And here you can see in Borderlands 4 with an RTX 3050, I was only getting about 30 FPS natively, which was choppy and not the best experience. With a quick adjustment on lossless scaling with frame gen set to 2X, you just click the scale button, pop back into the game, and then that 30 FPS gets doubled up to 60. This is not a gimmick. This is legit 60 FPS. Well, legit with frame generation, and according to Nvidia, that is legit. Frame generation is inserting quote unquote fake frames in between the real ones. That multiplier number is how many fake frames are inserted, so the higher you go, the more fake it's gonna look. There are some downfalls of using frame generation though, so let's talk about those. Now that frame gen is on here in Borderlands 4, that 60 FPS feels way smoother for sure. It's actually night and day difference in that department, but the problem is that it introduces a bit of input lag. After our benchmarker Sam tested all sorts of games with frame gen, he told me that the lag was pretty bad and he didn't like it. We actually recorded a bunch of clips of him whiffing on shots in competitive titles. Not that we can prove that he would have landed those as headshots, but he did have a pretty tough time with it when frame gen was turned on. Now for some context, Sam is the type of person that when it's a benchmarking day, he brings his own mouse pad here to the studio. So when a sweat like that tells me that there's some input lag, a mid thirties gamer dad like myself probably doesn't notice it. But this time I do actually agree with him and I'm not gonna lie, this input lag on Borderlands 4 was pretty unbearable. My aiming was noticeably better at 30 FPS without the lag, and there is a little bit of graphic glitching in here if you look closely as well. But what type of hardware do you actually need to take advantage of lossless scaling? Everything that I just showed you was with an RTX 3050, but also an additional GTX 1650 as the second GPU. Here's the full specs of our testing rig today, and shout out again to Okinos for this beautiful Aircross case. This was my poor attempt at replicating a bad pre-built gaming PC. Links to everything are down in the description, by the way. Obviously, this is a very nice looking fake pre-built, but the Intel i5 12400F and RTX 3050 aren't all that great. Unfortunately, that's still a pretty common CPU and GPU combination that I see from the bigger pre-built manufacturers, so that's why I went with them for the video. Over the past few days, we ran a bunch of different combinations, including a single RTX 3050, two RTX 3050s, a 3050 and a 1650, and at the end, I tested frame gem with just a 1650 by itself. No matter which GPU that you have, I encourage you to try this out for yourself. Oh, and make sure you always go into Windows Display Settings, Graphics, Advanced Graphics, and set the default high-performance GPU to whatever your main GPU is. And speaking of which, if you are gonna try out a dual GPU setup, you actually have to plug in your monitor cables to whatever your secondary GPU is. In lossless scaling, set the secondary or frame gen GPU as your preferred GPU, and then the one below that can just be set to auto. Even though we're plugged into the bottom or secondary GPU, the processing power is still mostly coming from our primary GPU, just the lossless scaling frame gen and scaling comes from the secondary one. Hopefully that made sense. Let's jump into another example with the RTX 3050 and 1650 as the secondary GPU. And the reason I like this setup is because you can grab a 1650 for less than $100. Please ignore our low profile card where we don't even have the full size bracket in here. We're working with what we got. Just gotta be a little bit careful since it's not screwed in. With the RTX 3050 and Black Ops 6, we're natively getting about 80 FPS, which isn't all that bad. I'm testing here in zombies mode. That way I can pause and adjust the settings as much as I want without a degenerate teenager screaming at me. But when I turn on 2X frame generation, that 80 FPS does in fact get boosted up to 160. Honestly, it's pretty crazy to see that level of a frame increase just by clicking one button and 160 FPS is so much smoother than 80. 80 FPS isn't terrible, I totally get that, but maybe you're trying to actually utilize that 120, 144, 165 hertz monitor. The problem again though is the input lag. When aiming around at these even predictable zombies chasing me, even a washed gamer like myself can instantly notice that lag. I'll admit that the lag is far less painful in this compared to Borderlands 4, but it's definitely still there. What we can also test in Black Ops 6, however, is native FSR 3 frame gem because that's built right into the game. So I turned off lossless scaling, enabled this, and here's what it looks like. In Call of Duty, you don't have control over the multiplier or anything, it just automatically does it. This boosted the native 80 FPS up to around 90 to 100. Not a huge difference, but it didn't feel all that bad with the lag, but it definitely was still there. I don't know if most gamers are like this, but whenever my brain can detect that what I'm doing with my arm and controlling the mouse isn't being shown up on the screen, or at least it is in a delay, it kind of ruins, ruins the gaming the experience, experience for me. I don't think I'm extra sensitive to input lag or anything, but it's personally just not how I want to game. I'm honestly a bit surprised at how many people are talking about how the input lag isn't that bad because I noticed it a ton and so did Sam. Even in Helldivers 2, I tried it because I might as 
well be spread in some democracy while I'm doing all this testing. And just like Black Ops, the lag was definitely there, but still not nearly as bad as Borderlands 4. What made things a bit difficult, specifically with this title, is that not only do you have the cursor in the middle of the screen, but you also have the circle that shows you exactly where the weapon is pointed in real time. Watching both of these be slightly delayed compared to what my hand was doing with the mouse was a bit trippy. I have a feeling that a lot of people saying the lag from frame gen isn't all that bad are more so just walking around in games, taking the scenic tour, and not actually getting into the heat of battle. Whether it was killing bugs, zombies, or whatever these things are in Borderlands 4, I personally was really affected by the lag and I had a much better time at native FPS. But that's where my first main conclusion comes from all of this testing. The RTX 3050 is too good of a GPU for, for lossless scaling. Please don't clip that out of context. Now, don't get me wrong. I am extremely impressed with this software and I think it's so cool, but the 3050's native FPS output is at least good enough for me to have a fun time. Sure, I do want my FPS numbers to always go up, but not at the cost of input lag or weird graphical glitches. What I also wanted to test was just adding a second 3050 to see if we got better results. Again, all of that was done with a sub $100 1650 as a secondary GPU. So let's see how it fares with a double RTX 3050 setup. And just for the record, I don't recommend a single person on the planet to rock a dual RTX 3050 system. We are just doing it for the sake of science. We actually ended up with some weird data too, because with our secondary GPU as the 3050, sometimes we weren't getting the full native performance out of the primary 3050. I'm not sure if Windows had an issue with two GPUs of the exact same name or what was happening, but we actually got better results with the 1650, and let's be honest, that's a more reasonable setup to run anyways. Now, one concept to talk about, though, is we do have access to some of this technology outside of lossless scaling. Things like FSR and DLSS can certainly help our gameplay experience, but not every game or every GPU or even GPU generation supports it. For example, the RTX 30 series does not support DLSS frame generation, so lossless scaling having its own on pretty much every game is really cool. The results you'll get from lossless scaling will change depending on which game, GPU, driver, and honestly so many variables that again, you really need to test this out for yourself. My second main conclusion from all this testing is that if you're the type of gamer that only plays competitive shooters, then yeah, lossless scaling probably isn't for you. But for literally everybody else, it's at least worth a try. From our short testing, we got confirmation that some games will respond better than others. Borderlands 4 is a hot mess at times with frame gen, but other titles aren't all that bad. It also depends on what type of gamer you are. If you're only playing slower paced, story-driven games, you might not even think about the lag at all. Being able to breathe new life into an underperforming GPU, especially with a sub $100 secondary card, or maybe even the old one you have lying around collecting dust is pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie, just the feeling of grabbing an old GPU that you had sitting on the shelf from your last build or before an upgrade and putting it into your current system and noticeably getting higher frames, it's a pretty good feeling. I'd say the best results are if your native FPS with your primary card are a around 60 FPS. If it's below that, then you'll get more input lag and probably more graphical warbling or artifacting. Here's Starfield having a problem with the reflections on a door, for example. But if you're way higher than 60 FPS, maybe towards 90 to 100, in my opinion, you probably don't need the frame gen turned on. There's a pretty high chance that at least some of the games you're currently playing are at that 50 to 60 FPS mark and loss of scaling could benefit you in there. In terms of buying a second GPU, I personally wouldn't recommend getting anything more than a sub one $100 card just for this. But again, ideally you're using an old one or maybe a cheap pickup that you found on Facebook Marketplace. It wouldn't be worth spending like $200 for this type of project because with that kind of money, you could buy an RTX 3070 and get way better results natively with just that as your primary GPU. Now, one final thing we wanted to test is the performance of lossless scaling if you only have a card like the 1650. Here's Borderlands 4. And just to be clear, this is a very unoptimized new game, definitely not designed to run on a GTX 1650. Here I'm getting about 15 FPS, which was almost impossible to aim with, and nobody would consider this playable. With 2x frame gen turned on without a secondary GPU, the FPS did actually go up to 30, which is impressive on its own. But that also resulted in some seriously graphical issues. Look at how my gun, the sights, and my crosshairs are basically teleporting all over the place. It was a hot mess. Lossless scaling can't magically get everything to run like that, but again, if used in the right situations, it's pretty impressive. And remember, as long as you keep your playtime under two hours on Steam, you can just 
just buy it, test it out for yourself, and refund it if you don't like the results. So yeah, even though I'm not a fan of the input lag for the shooter titles, this is still something that I think almost every PC gamer should have in their Steam library. If you're daily driving an RTX 5090, then you definitely don't. You're probably not even watching this video to be fair though. But for anyone rocking a low end to even mid range build, this is some of the most fun $7 that you can spend on Steam. Again, I'd love to read about your results with losses scaling down the comment section and feel free to check out this $450 gaming PC build guide that I should probably go try running lossless scaling on next.